Let's pray. Let's bind every spirit that's wondering. Let's get our minds on the Word tonight, shall we? Lord, we thank you tonight for your spirit and your power. And we thank you for the living Word. We heard anointed Word this morning that quickened our hearts and challenged us. We heard it Tuesday. We heard it Friday. We heard it Thursday. Now, Lord, we're never tiring of your precious Word. We don't get tired of your Word. And I pray that you would make this Word a two-edged sword tonight. Holy Spirit, I need you. I need that special unction and anointing of the Holy Ghost. Lord, you're about to shut the door on many, many who've taken advantage of you, who have not valued your presence, who are not heeding your word. You're going to rise up and you're going to shut the door. Oh, Jesus, send your Holy Ghost tonight with conviction. Put the knife to our hearts if you must. Cut it asunder. Lord, let there, let there be a seriousness tonight. Let there be a sobering by the Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Once you go to Luke, the 13th chapter. Luke 13. That's Luke 13, beginning of chapter, uh, verse 22. And he went through the cities and villages teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that are going to be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house has risen up and has shut the door, you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. In other words, I don't know where you're coming from. I don't know who you belong to. Then shall you begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourself thrust out. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and the south, and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there are last which shall be first, and there are first which shall be last. Would you go back to verse 23? Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? Are there few that be saved? Look at the church today. Armies of trained experts, shepherds and Christian workers. Where are most of them headed? They're headed to Freud. They're headed to Carl Ung. They're headed to psychology. They're headed to seminars where they learn how the experts do it. Where they once to pray, once used to pray and seek the face of God and hear from heaven. Now they know how to do it. They're experts. They have expertise. And you ask the question, Lord, how many are going to be saved here out of all these millions? And then the, question, the answer always comes back, such a few. Our churches no longer have the power of God to attract the people in many circles. So they've gone down to Egypt and borrowed its music, its dancing, its entertainment, hoping to get the crowd back. It's not a passion for souls, it's just a passion for crowds. I've got men who hate what I preach, but they'd love to have me because they think I can get a crowd. And they just sit back there laughing at me as long as the church is packed. The anguish and the anxiety that's in the church of Jesus Christ today because we have a people going back to Egypt. Going backwards. Our churches no longer have the power of God to attract the people in many circles. So they've gone down to Egypt and borrowed its music, its dancing, its entertainment, hoping to get the crowd back.
calling for crusades in five of the major cities, flying into Poland, into the Iron Curtain countries. You feel the, 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 the spirit of those nations behind the Iron Curtain. You think not only of Poland, Czechoslovakia, Romania, all those Eastern Bloc countries, you think of Russia. God, this is a city given to witchcraft. It's a city of, uh, of all kinds of idolatries. How many are going to be saved? And you hear that sad report in, in lieu of the population, in, in view of the population, so very few. Then you move to China and you think of the multiplied hundreds of millions in China. And then you're talking not millions of lost souls, you're talking billions. Billions and you say, oh Jesus, how many are going to be saved? Are there just a few? The same question this man asked. We've got an army now of experts teaching us how to do the work of God. Jesus Christ no longer the center of it. Busy engaged in hard work for the Lord. And it leaves you weary, it leaves you burned out, it leaves you empty. Because you're on the road to Egypt. I'm going to make a statement and I hope you hear me and I kid you not. When you're moving in the spirit and when you're holding the head and when it means hold the head it means you retain Christ as the center of everything. You will not get weary. You will not get burned out. You will not get discouraged. There will be an ever increasing light dawning in your heart. I've learned that the hard way. Idol worship. You don't really relate, do you? Let's try it again. I was watching TV the other day, and this show comes on with these religious fanatics, and they were crazy. Well, you would think they were crazy if you didn't understand their culture and their religion. See, that's just the thing. See, they were worshippers of idols. Priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy kingdom. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. Worship and survival. Hit your lungs on my Sabbath, and I am profane among them. Worship is a Bible. took things to extremes. They painted their bodies, they wore these ridiculous costumes, they chanted, they danced, they even made sacrifices to the idols. But they had built these enormous temples to worship their idols in. It seems like their entire existence climaxed into this one scenario, this one over-the-top act of worship. Idol worship. It's not only golden calves anymore. 